Good day, and welcome to the first in our Way With Words contractor series. My name is Dale Dunbar, and I head up the contractor recruitment for Way With Words. Through the series, we will be sharing with you more about Way With Words, our operations across multiple platforms and service areas, and how you, our contractors, contribute to the success of Way With Words. We will be meeting key people in the business and much later in the series, exploring some of the nitty gritties of our requirements. But for now, it's my pleasure to introduce our CEO, Adam Kosowski, to you. Adam, Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Adam, how and when did you become involved with Way With Words? Thank you, Dale. Um, well, there's two stories. There's the long version and the short version, but let me save everybody and give them the shorter version. I got involved in 2007, um, very much involved in consulting and some sort of activities related to project management. I had uh, and was involved in various other companies at that stage and I was invited by one of the original shareholders of Wayworth Words to join the company and uh, to meet the team as they say. And Wayworth Words at that time was very small. Uh, it had a staff component of three people and a small group of in-house transcribers. And it was an interesting prospectus. The challenge was to get a small company that had just started with its intention to serve clients, particularly in London, operating from South Africa as a, what we used to call in those times a BPO. The BPO in particular was aimed at providing offshore services to new markets and with the shareholders involved both in the United Kingdom and in South Africa, they decided to try grow out the business as one of their stable of ventures, capital venture investments. So in 2007, I joined. I was originally sort of mandated to possibly set up proper structures in the company. We did a business plan and that led in 2012 to the first restructuring of Wayworth Words with various departments and the first initial incoming group of management in the company. And from that stage around 2012, I became permanently involved in the business. Uh, I have personally become involved in the shareholding too. And we have a fantastic team of people, as you know, today's conversation is about the contractors and the people around who make way with words work. And that commitment has stayed to the day to 2020. And I'm proudly here today. What would you say is the most important aspect of the Way With Words culture? Well, culture is a different, is a very specific term with very different implications depending who and what you are in the world. But definitely in our business, our mandate around culture is based on behaviors such as honesty, transparency. But we also build it around the way we work. We are very focused on our professionality. Um, as a professional, company servicing a market that originally was very administrative. We've changed substantially. These days we see culture as a measure of meeting the expectations of the customer on the one side, which is the most important market, obviously for the growth of the company and serving our uh, clients worldwide, which we'll come to. But certainly the culture of how we have presented ourselves to the clients with the contractors behind the business has been an incredibly important component of the business success story. So our mandate in Way With Words was to bring a culture that we live for the people in the company. We want to have relationships and bring the personal element where we can to every element, particularly the contractors at this stage and in our future forecasts because we've always seen the virtual environment, understood it many years ago, but the systems to build brand and to build belief in the company always work around who you've got working with the company. So our culture is to work and build on a personal relationship both with customers and clients by being honest, transparent about what we can do, taking on work that we believe we can always do, but also building out a very strong component of change and the ability to adapt is so critical at this stage. So that nuance is very important also on our contractor side. And I'm sure many of you may have seen Wayworth Words' approach to contracting is changing and hopefully we can maybe raise a few points around that. But that's how we see culture and the cultural fit. What would you see as the vision or priorities for the business? 
So right from the beginning, and we can go back to about 2012, we already saw the world of the internet. We understood it then, and we had a very strong focus on how do we build out a model that is already virtual. Back in the times where bricks and mortar, uh, physical presence was still very, very much relevant in most business models. But it takes time. It takes a long time to change, sometimes particularly in the beginning, because you need to get a lot of factors right. You've got to get the right team on board. You've got to get the right structures where they make sense on board. And most importantly, after all of that, is who your clients are going to be and what are their requirements going to be. So we spent time between about 2012 to 2015 preparing in the background of our business how would Way With Words be moving forward? How is the next decade going to be managed? What are we going to be after 2020, which is right now? And in terms of timing and timelines, what's very interesting is, in fact, we did what we call the white paper. We now call it the living document about Way With Words. And we've done two years of thorough research. We've spoken to people worldwide, company executives, other competitors in our same market, complementary clients who actually do see us also assisting them with future work which may require a new skill set. And we've adopted ourselves into a sort of a phase now where we understand that the critical thing here is not to present a particular case for a business service, but to rather work with the skill sets around us. And the contractors are an incredibly important component of that. So we do see, coming back to the contractor side, a very strong model orientating to itself towards a couple of factors that we have to deal with. Where are we in the world in terms of the markets and their requirements for from data protection to data processing across to how are the customers changing with how we operate and what they need and can we adapt to that change correctly. So our vision is very much to be an adaptive and adoptive a company but also to be very honest and transparent about our directions where we can take work on or how we can work with clients to reach those particular moments in time where some of our business services are now actually realizing themselves to be uh, substantially commercially viable and also uh, quite mature in terms of their ability to enter the market at the right price points, but more importantly, that we're entering the market with the right backing to provide value to the client. And how does this fit in with our existing markets? So our existing markets, let's take two snapshots of our markets. We had the markets back, let's call it pre-2015. That was a very specific market. That was people who are looking for transcription, speech to text as we would like to call it somewhat today, um, largely administratively driven, set with clients that were largely in those times based in the United Kingdom. So a significant portion of our market, I would say pre-2015, would be a 90% in the UK and 10% elsewhere. Some clients also existed in South Africa, a few in Europe, and a couple in the United States. Post-2015, when we changed our model, we started to look at the dynamics of the model of markets and changes with our various foci on what services we were going to introduce. We decided to expand the market globally, and we took no particular limitations on that outside of the remit that we stick to the English language as a core part of our brand, and that we also provide a value to product by ensuring that what the client required in terms of transcription would be addressed, particularly where customization inquiries started to emerge. For example, clients started to come to us and say, well, we don't just need the transcript, we need an intelligent version of this for our reporting, or we need to make a decision based on what's happening, or can you deal with very highly scientific terminologies under very specific conditions, uh, such as uh, nuclear physics. Or So we realized you can't be, we can be a general transcription company, but you can't be everything to everybody. We stuck with the idea that the key things that were selling us or making us uh, or creating our brand awareness, which is very strong in certain parts of the world, was our focus on not going too digressive across the board to other languages or starting to do a lot of other things or activities that other transcription companies typically in our industry were doing. For example, just becoming translation companies, just becoming proofreading. 
That doesn't mean we didn't look into it. We certainly did test some of it because we wanted to know if there was a space for us. But uh, we, did, we decided from a shareholder and a st strategy perspective to stick to our mandate, which was English language, do it extremely well, then go global. So our markets presently address more or less, if you look at our client base, there's 21 countries we've uh, put onto our list that we have uh, basically permanent clients in, which is a fairly broad uh, remit. Um, we definitely service across all verticals. We have, as uh, you know, some finance companies, we've got law companies, legal, academic institutions, a lot of media and brand, house, uh, brand houses use us. Uh, Well-known names around the world use us. We're very proud of that. And again, the contractors play a big role in uh, supporting those particular client bases that have, some of them have been with us for over a decade. Interestingly, in more recent times, our market is changing. And there's a couple of reasons. Um, which I think you may be asking about, but uh, looking at the service side, we're also expanding our portfolio as, as we can go into just now. But a big part of it is also the, let's call it the drivers of technology. Technologies were probably easier to understand five years ago than they are today. Technology in its own essence doesn't really exist. It can be broken down into many, many different facets of development taking place right now from the amount of languages taking place across to the requirements. And so blue sky areas are very big in our interest. And certainly we have a growing uh, market space with technology companies coming to us for support, which actually leads itself to slightly, uh, or, well, actually to changes in our own service arena. Uh, as you can see, some of our new services are actually driven by those, those industries. You often speak about the shift which this industry is making. Could you tell us more about the way that this affects emerging client profiles and growth? Yes, certainly. Um, and probably I answered that a little bit earlier. Um, so I tend to answer a lot of things uh, at, at once. Um, but it's important because I think all of it actually kind of all comes together. There's a, there's a very sort of interrelated set of activities that make more sense when you look at them as a composite rather than individually. Um, and certainly our services tell us that story. Uh, if you take Wayworth Words two to three years ago, as I said maybe a bit earlier, we were English language transcriptions serving particular markets. Today we offer five services already on our website if you go to it at waywithwords.net. And we also have a second brand which we have engaged with to offer to certain kinds of clients under the Nibity.com flagship. But we certainly offer audio transcription, video transcription. Now through partnerships and technology opportunities, we have signed on and commercially offer hybrid captioning, which is increasingly growing and actually fast growing. And within that particular service arena, we have allowed ourselves to work with our partners to introduce new languages. And then two other services that have been driven particularly by the technology uh, industries or verticals are machine transcription polishing for uh, providers of technologies, for example, call center operations, trying to improve the uh, authenticity and obviously through biometrics across to the accuracy of understanding and interpreting the human exchanges through verbal, uh, through, through, through sound and word. Um, and those are service areas that we've become quite invested in and we certainly have some very, very good clients now in certain parts of the world that use us for that. And then we also do speech collection. I mean, data sets came from a big growth in um, an interest from the biggest players in the world who are looking to evolve new language library sets, either for specialized solutions um, or certainly to support their growth with the day-to-day -day use of their equipment, which probably includes this very uh, video and uh, other pieces of equipment. <laughs> what do you see as the importance of contractors to our brand? Everything. I think contractors are actually everything to our brand. And that's why it's an interesting question because when con we have a lot of people applying to Way With Words, and I'm sure Dale will inform you very well later on at some stage about this, but I can give you rough estimations that the jobs website itself has over 12,000 people a month 
coming through to have a look. Um, our calculations are that we have an enormous breadth of selection and opportunity to look into it. And of course, on the other hand, it's important to know who's working with us, that there's a fit to the client, the customer base, the changing needs. So where do contractors fit? They first of all fit by representing the brand. Everything you produce that comes through the Way With Words brand, as much as it's difficult or perhaps very challenging to work for us, I think we should be extremely proud of. I don't know exactly how the contractors respond, but that they respond to this, but I would say that to work for Way With Words, I would honestly say from our side, it's humbling to know that there are very good contractors working for us. And by all accounts, with many of our clients, the product quality that we achieve with many of you is something that supersedes the expectations of many of the clients who do deal, obviously, with the industry in general and have choices. They've got a lot of choices. So that's the first answer to your question. The second one, which I think is quite interesting for contractors to think about, is where do we go forward? with the company and right now strategically we are definitely entering new service areas. So the type of contracting or the contractor, the skill set of the contractor and the professional belief, if you want to use that word, in what they're doing for Way With Words would count a lot in their value proposition and how we would interact with people who are going to come and join Way With Words in future. We definitely see the contractor as much more of a professional person as time passes. Right now, we view you as professional and we're very proud of it. And that's how we present it to the clients. Um, and I think that's an important point to keep in the back of one's mind. You know, as a contractor, you may be feeling quite alone, quite isolated. I hope not at way with words, but definitely many virtual employers are finding an enormous challenge in having relationships with contractors. We find that with Dale and her team, and definitely with our operational side, that we find or hope that the contracting side is much more of a relationship-based approach. And we intend to adopt and keep that. We definitely don't see a shift away to scale for the sake of scale. But we do see opportunity to do two things with contractors. One. We do have to get more professional contractors on board. We've got very good opportunities coming into 2021 right now. So I'd be very excited to see more people joining Way With Words. And two, we're also finding ourselves having to look at systems that are going to be increasingly hybrid driven. Uh, and that's an important point because contracting at the moment is very much a product based or productivity based solution. And you guys are pro providing brilliant transcripts coming through. There's a measure within operations of qualifying them, checking them, presenting them back to the clients because there is a process within the company to do that. Now there's also areas in which we're going to increasingly work with technology directly. And the relationship with the contractors actually becomes much closer. We feel that's going to be an important component in providing almost literally towards a lifetime solutions that many of our clients are entering conversations with, not only with us, but in the industry. And we want to approach that industry. And we've got great technology potential partners, um, which we are already having discussions with. And how do we mix that with our contracting base? So it's exciting times. Uh, it'll be quite challenging. Uh, if it wasn't challenging, we'd all, um, yeah, we'd all be at home. And uh, I don't know what everyone would be doing, but I, I think we'd be, uh, uh, less inclined to be sitting here, we'd be pretty much trying to find the next uh, mountain to climb. So we, we're very driven by growth and um, using our brand and reputation to do that correctly is very important in the balance of things. What do you see as the opportunities which 2021 will bring? So I think first of all, let's take a look at current situation 2020 2019 where we've where are we where have we come from and i think that's a big question because fundamentally the pillars of business how we do business what services we offer the way in which we manage people contracting itself uh, working virtually it's all changed um, of course the bottom line in all of it is in the beginning is that of course virtuality is here to stay and the arguments are very strong for that we see massive companies that are revising their models to accommodate it more. 
But Way With Words was already prepared in a long, in, in, in a long sense or a long-term sense for that already a few years back. And our idea there was not to be preempted by the current situation, but certainly to drive towards a model that addresses customers where customers are and to provide virtuality to support that. So going into 2021, one has to take stock of 2020. And 2020 has been an incredibly challenging year, as we all know, worldwide for a multiple of reasons, which I won't go on to. But from a way with words perspective, I think we're very lucky. And I'm very careful about the word lucky. Uh, lucky usually implies chance. But as I hopefully indicated a bit earlier, uh, it's not by chance we're here. We have been prepared for a very strong virtual model. But it's also challenged. And so 2021, one of our biggest challenges coming up is going to be data and data compliance. Definitely localization is a big word that's being thrown around. It's by all industries, particularly, you know, if you take our industry across the length and breadth of it in communications, translation companies are encountering it, captioning companies are encountering it. Everywhere where data moves and sound is recorded or videos are made or audio has to be processed, control of that data is becoming eminently more relevant to everything. So from Way With Words' point of view, we've done a couple of steps which we feel very um, confident with. First of all, we've ensured ourselves a year ago, if not more, of full GDPR compliance. So we operate 100% correctly in our key markets at the moment in the United Kingdom and, and throughout Europe. We are, of course, aware of the Brexit issues, but we're on top of that. In Australia, we've registered our specific numbers in Australia, ABN. We are fully sanctioned to operate in Australia, and we are seriously looking to uh, take on much more of an investment scenario in Australia going forward, in, even in terms of bricks and mortar in time, serving the APAC region. Our markets in 2021 are going to significantly spike in our view in the US and in Canada, and they already are. There's a lot of technology interest in our services to support developments in some blue sky areas and also to support huge growth in certain industries for much more accurate data as uh, utilizing um, recordings and sound and video. So of course that's all come together and we have significant uh, opportunities now presented in those, in those regions. So from a market point of view, I would say North America, Europe, the UK, to some extent definitely APAC and the Asia region, Singapore is a big market for us. Across to Africa, uh, the unsort of told story. And more recently, we've discovered having an operational base here. And of course, I'm based in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, we have a very strong interest from the biggest players internationally to develop probably Africa-oriented data set libraries for audio purposes, audio to text purposes, and for developing speech to text uh, solutions. Um, Across the markets itself, I would say technology is going to be the biggest driver. But way with words is uh, current indicators are we work closely with some of them to in fact evolve custom solutions that in itself will form new markets. So to answer your question in a shorter way, we see significant growth in 2021. We see customization and big projects being a key part of that. And we see technology-led interest being a big component of our growth at this point in time. Adam, thank you so much for spending the time with us and giving us your valuable insights into the future, especially going forward into 2021. Should you, our contractors, have any questions for Adam or myself with regards to this discussion, please feel free to contact our recruitment team or your relevant operations team.